All right, hi there, MTG Ontario. It's Fam here again for another M12 84 draft. And uh, it's been about a week or so since I got back from Grand Prix Shanghai. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the results for you guys, but uh, you guys can head on over to the Daily MTG website and uh, check out the coverage for yourself. Sorry, that was my phone going off. Yeah, I have a uh, Superman ringtone for my text messages. Uh, but, anyways. Yeah, I got back from Grand Prix Shanghai late last week, or sorry, earlier last week, and uh, had we had work pretty much all last week, and I've been writing up a tournament report wherever I had time to, and I just finished it write, writing it today, so it should be up and about uh, hopefully soon, and whenever it is up, um, I'll probably post a link on either this video or the next video, and you guys can uh, check out uh, how things went for me there. So uh, just waiting for this draft to fire. Oh, we were at seven. Now it's down back to six. Just waiting a little bit. All right. So uh, getting right into this draft here. Um, this pack's pretty interesting. We got a lot of red cards here, um, which is kind of awkward, especially considering I think the best card in this pack is the Chandra's Phoenix, because it's a hasted three mana two two flyer, which is still decent. Um, and the fact that it can recur is also pretty good. But uh, there's two really insane, uh, I don't know if they're insane, but two really good uh, red red common bloodthirst creatures here. And the other card in this pack that I want to take is an Aether Adept, maybe even like Child of Night or Garak's Companion, but Aether Adept is definitely the card I'm looking at. Uh, I think it's between one of the three drops, and considering I don't have a playset of Challenges Phoenix, I'm going to go red, but... I'm not as necessarily advocating this is the necessarily correct pick here. I'm rare drafting, but uh, maybe the Aether Depth is the more correct pick here, but I'm going with that. This pack, oh man, now this is a pack. Wow. Um, so we got uh, Phantasmal Dra Dragon, uh, Skywinder Drake in blue, uh, two removal spells in black, uh, Doom Blade and Soren's Thirst. One, obviously much more stronger than the other. There's also a Devouring Swarm, a Goblin Fire Slinger in red, which is probably one of the best um, enablers for Bloodthirst in this format. And then there's a uh, Salt Griffin and Griffin Rider in white, which is fine too. We also even have Reverberator Fling. I think the pick for me is Doomblade here. I like going black, red, beat down. It was uh, one of the strategies I drafted the most the most uh, at GP Shanghai, and I'm going to see how it pans out here. I think it's probably one of the most drafted formats online as well. Sorry, one of the most drafted archetypes online as well, but uh, Doomblade is definitely the strongest card of this pack here, and we're probably going to wheel something in our color, so we'll see where that goes. Um, the cards in our archetype right now are the Blood Rage Vampire, Child of Night, and the Bonebreaker Giant. Um, there's also a pacifism here to make note of, but we didn't take any of the white cards early, and we shipped them, so I considered shipping them more here, but pacifism is kind of a signal at this point, but it only really pairs well with red. I don't really like going white-black all that much. It's okay, it's not that great, but Child of Night goes perfectly well with our Doomblade, and I'm fine with taking it here, so yeah, we'll take that. Uh, okay, so this pack we got the Blood Ogre, which is definitely better than a Goblin Fighter. But a Merfolk Looter at this point is kind of a, a little bit of something to take note of, considering all the blue cards have been being, that are being passed. Also, Skywinder Drake is also a very solid blue card as well. But Blood Ogre is in our colors. It's very solid for us. I'm just going to take it here. <clears throat> I think Black Red is probably my favorite. Black Red Bloodthirst is my favorite strategy in this format anyway, so we'll see how that pans out. But considering how that first pack went with Chandra's Phoenix and all those other red cards, it was it's kind of awkward, I'll have to admit. Uh, yeah, this card's so good. So much value. Alright, so this pack's kind of bland for us. We got a Fiery Hellhound and a Warpath Ghoul and a Distant Tomb if we really want it. On the other side, we could take a green card, but none of these are that impressive for me to jump into green for. And even Fleet Wings aren't that great either on blue. So, the uh, question is black or red. Uh, I think the Warpath Ghoul is slightly less mana intensive. It's not that great, 
But the Fiery Hellhound, I've just never really been impressed with that card unless you pair it with something like Fling, but then again, it's not that great. If you have Goblin Tunnelers, I'll consider taking this guy, but I think the Warpath Ghoul is fine here. 3 mana for 3 is fine. That's a pretty late Aether Adept. Um, I think the Drifting Shade is perfectly fine in our colors, but like this is, I don't know, I mean, blue-black is also a reasonable strategy here, but we, we're passing up 2 3 drops for another 3 drop here. The Aether Adept is just like insane, I love that card. Uh, yeah, it's pretty strong signal. I don't know. Like, this Jade Mage is also pretty late. Lurking Crocodile is also very solid. I'm going to take the Drifting Shade here and just try and stay focused. Try not to deviate too much and see if we can get rewarded for that. Uh, the Dark Favor is fine, I guess, in this type of deck. So, especially if we pick up something like Storm, uh, what's that guy called? Stormblood Berserker. Or even Tormented Soul works really well with that as well, so we'll take that. Uh, I guess another Warpath Ghoul will do. That's a lot of Llanowar Elves, and Trollhide's kind of bad for us, but yeah, anyways. Take that, move on. Smallpox, not the greatest for us, but I guess it'll do in a pinch if we really need some sort of removal. I'm going to hide it for now, because I kind of don't want to play it. So, wow, out of this pack we only get the Reverberate back, which is not great, not terrible, but it's not that great either. Uh, but none of these cards are that insane. That pack was pretty loaded though, so I don't, I guess a lot of people are sort of in that kind of strategy. Uh, kind of don't want to play against Titanic Growth. The others are fine. And I don't know why this guy keeps going so late. He's pretty good. I've always liked him in every course at draft I've had him in. And this Entomb is fine. So, so far, deck's not that great, but not that terrible either. It has a, like, an aggressive curve and... A removal spell or two, so I should be okay. See where that goes. So we'll see where we can go with this. I, I mean to say. All right. So this pack. Ooh, vine control. Ooh, really want it. Ooh, timely reinforce. Timely reinforcements. Probably gonna get blown out by that card. But, unfortunately, can't take any of the uncommons here because they're all off-color. Every single one of them, unfortunately. Like, I don't know how much I want to commit to this red, though. Like, if we took that Aether Adept right now, it'd be all over this mind control. But, considering we stuck to our guns... Uh, still really want this mind control. But, the Goblin Fire Slinger is a good card for this archetype. And it's there for the taking. I guess we'll take it here. I guess it's okay. We might wheel one of these like other red or black commons here, but yeah, that's well, pretty reasonable. Like this, all these uncommons are insane. All these common uncommons are good here. And then like Sacred Wolf, J, like Sacred Wolf, Titanic Road, Stamping Rhino. These cards might go, and we might be able to get one of these back. So I'll take the Goblin Fire Slinger here. Try and stick to this. Try not to deviate too much. Uh, Dust Hunter Bat looks at home in this. It looks like it's at home at, in this deck. Uh, might get the Act of Treason Distress back on the wheel, but try not to focus on that too much. Uh, this guy, I played against him. He's not really that exciting. He's just like a giant, he's just like a giant monster. And I mean, giant idiots are like plentiful in green. I mean, three mana. He's not. He's no Tarmogoyf, but he can get scary. But yeah, it's something to keep in mind. Uh. Okay, so we have the option between a utility card like Manic Vandal or another Warpath Ghoul. Or I don't know how good this card is. I think in five mana, a deck really probably just rather have like a lava axe or something. We just want to be as aggressive as possible. I think I take a utility card. Might blow someone out with it. Definitely don't really need the mana in this kind of deck. So okay, so the pick here is between a fiery hellhound or a mine rot. Depends what our deck really wants to do. Do we just want to like keep spewing out the creatures and play a really aggressive strategy or? Have some backup. I think the Mind Rot is fine here. Cards like Fiery Hellhound tend to go around anyway, so we might be able to pick one up later. And Lightning Elemental is not exciting. A lot of Troll Highs and Titanic Girls. Just something to keep in mind if we play against a green deck. Um, yeah, another Travel Knight looks fine here. Deathmark is not something I really want to main deck right now. I mean, it's a good card and it's fine in this format to main deck, but. Uh, I think Child of Knight's much more reasonable here to take. I'll take that. And we got a choice between Goblin Tunneler and Goblin Piker. And considering we have a decent amount of two power or less creatures, I guess the Tunneler seems fine. And 
Um, if we get that, and if we get the fiery hellhound on the way back, then it'll work out well there. So I guess we'll take that as fine. And that's a pretty late soaring stars. I'm not really sure how much I like Call to Grave. Uh, we have a couple of zombies, albeit, but Call to Grave is not. It's a pretty hard card to play. And I'm not exactly sure if this is exactly the kind of deck we want because it seems like our deck will have more creatures than theirs most of the time anyways. So we're probably losing out on value with this card anyways. I think we just want more removal spells to keep their stuff at bay and not worry about getting to 5 mana. So I think we'll take the Soren's Thirst there and keep on taking Soren's Thirst. So we'll be okay with that. <sighs> so far this deck looks alright. I need. I would like to see one of the 4 drops in our colors that have Bloodthirst. And I think if we picked up a couple of those our deck would be fine. Maybe even like a Sengir Vampire or Volcanic Dragon, is that too much to ask? I'm not asking for bears, I'm just asking for uncommons. <laughs> but uh, this deck looks okay. Um, another Fire Slinger or even Tormented Soul uh, could make this deck really good too. But then again, like we only have like one Bloodthirst, two, two Bloodthirst creatures at the moment, so we're not really too worried about that at the moment. <sighs> hmm. It's getting a little slow here. Trying to figure out who's holding up the line. Uh, okay, so this pack came back and we got the Bonebreaker Giant, um, which is fine, something we can play. I'm going to hide this Disentomb because I don't think we really need it at this point. But I think this deck looks fine so far. There's a lot of green cards going on. I'm wondering, like, why is nobody in green, it seems like. I mean, there's somebody in green, but not that many. Distress is in our colors, I guess that's fine, something we can play as well. So not the worst. I think of Distress as like a proactive cancel. And in this format, I'd rather just be proactive than reactive anyways. Just because like I think that the format, especially in draft compared to sealed, is much faster. It reminds me of Zendikar block. Whereas like if you slip up a little bit, you could fall really far behind. So something like Distress instead of cancel is much less punishing. Especially if you have nothing to do on turn two, just burn it. Go ahead. You'll get value out of it almost all the time. Unless your opponent kept a 7 lander. <laughs> uh, don't really need another Distant Tomb, so I'll take this card. I'm not sure if I'm going to play with it. We'll see, but uh, it doesn't seem like a card I need. Take the Birdle Boar here, because that's annoying to play against for our deck. And I guess Life Link is annoying, but I really don't care if they play that. Alright, so Dex looks like it's coming together. Could still use a little bit more help, like maybe incinerate some bloodthirst guys or Soren's Vengeance. Yeah. This is a 7 mana fireball for 10, so we're taking that. Uh, this pack really doesn't have much for us to go on. Might get Goblin Tunnel or something on the way back. Uh, Crimson Mage, Goblin Piker, all these cards are fine. Get those back on the way back maybe, but uh, yeah. Black Fireball it is. So it's kind of awkward though, like our Chandra's Phoenix has almost nothing to go on at the moment, but I mean I guess that's fine. It's a 3 mana 2 2 haste is how I saw it. Uh, oh, there is a Goblin Fire Slinger, which seems perfectly fine here. Uh, definitely don't need like a Bone Breaker Giant. Like the Devouring Swarm seems okay here too, but I think that like the Fire Slinger, like is reasonably the better card here, especially since it'll turn on our uh, Bloodthirst creatures, which is a lot more important. I and mean, we're okay for three drops. We have a lot of two drops as well. So, um, And this makes even cards like uh, Blood Rage Vampires a higher pick, um, because it's essentially, like, with these guys, they're basically 4-2 Warpath Ghouls. Um, as, like, that's basically how I see it. So, um, This pack... 
doesn't have much for us to go on. Uh, both the rares are crap, and uh, I guess the Lava Axe is fine here. It's kind of what our deck wants to do, and I'd rather be doing that on 5 mana than Mono Mania. So, yeah. Um, we got a Lava Axe, a Soren's Vengeance. Man, how sweet would that be to reverberate those? <laughs> but uh, at the moment, uh, we got some big burn spells, a uh, couple of small creatures. Got a Distress and a Mind Rot here. It's not too bad, not too bad. Just this deck to get there. I'd like to see another Blood Ogre, Stormfront Berserker, any Blood... It's another Call to Grave? Am I going to take it this time? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Am I going to spend time jerking around with that kind of stuff? I don't really care. Like, I feel like if they're tapping out on 5 to play the Call to Grave against me, it's, they should be in a worse position because my creatures are crap compared to theirs, so if it gets to that point in the game. So I guess... Well, I mean, for that same reason, Call of the Grave is better for me. But I could go, like, double Mind Rot Distress here, which seems fine with this kind of strategy, too. So... Yeah, actually, I'm going to take the Mind Rot. Might be incorrect. I might even play all of them. But uh, let's see. This pack doesn't have much for me to go on. There's a Distress... Um... Yeah. Uh, I guess if we're going to go discard, go full discard, but I'm, not, I'm probably not going to play two distresses anyways. Um, plus it's pretty mana intensive, so yeah, it's not even going to bother. Um, I guess I don't want to play against Fog. <laughs> uh, Blood Rage Vampire seems like the pick over the Bonebreaker because of our early our early curve, so I guess that's fine. Let's take that. <coughs> And another Chalonite, another Manic Vandal, another Blood Rage. Uh, somebody won a tournament, okay. Um, Combust is also a reasonably good sideboard card, but I think one of these creatures is our pick. Child of Night, we got two, we got one, two, three, four creatures on two. We got a bunch of creatures on three. So I think a Child of Night's the pick here, just because we'd rather have like more two drops than three drops. We've got six three drops as it is, so I guess, uh, Taking the Child of Night. Uh, this pack really has nothing for us, so I feel like taking the rare, even though this rare is not even that good. Uh, actually, I'll just take the Divine Favor, because I don't want them gaining life. <clears throat> so, we got the Crimson Mage back, which is obviously much better than a Goblin Piker. So, I guess we'll take that. Siege Master, I don't really feel like hating. I can actually cut. I feel like I'm cutting the giant here because I don't even need that. I think our deck's just going to be super fast. And Redirect's really annoying to play against. I played against that at the Grand Prix. And I just don't want to have to play against it again. These cards all blah. I think there's more chance that someone's going to play the 1 2 instead of a 4 1. As crazy as it sounds, so I'm going to take that out of the deck. Take Dragon's Claw out. And sure, I'll take a Faith to Blood. Alright, so we'll see how this deck pieces itself together. Okay then. I'm gonna take the Goblet Fire Slingers, that guy, that guy, that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in. And probably play the Lavax. Uh yeah, this feels like a Lavax deck. Let's put the shades, the rules in, mine rods, put all that in. Not putting those guys in, because the small pox and distress are pretty mana intensive and color intensive rather, so I really don't wanna put those in just yet. And yeah, Dark Favor, why not? Let's see how that looks like. We've got 24 cards at the moment. I'm probably going to cut that last Dark Favor that I put in. Well, it depends. It could, it could work out for us. 
I like the way it, uh, I like the way our deck's looking. It's pretty aggressive. All our creatures are between like two and one to three, basically. Mine rot gets a lot more value for us later in the game. We got nice removal package. And so the Dark Favor is kind of like the awkward card in our here. It's like the Dark Favor can go on, um, well, I think basically go on anything. We only have a few evasion creatures though. Uh, Child of Night could, it could work well on Child of Night as well. But I don't really see a reason to put it on right now. I guess I'll just cut that. Run 17 lands in this. I mean, I guess I could cut, like we have 15 creatures. Do I need any any other do I need like a bone breaker giant? Like no, it's not gonna work, especially if we're gonna cut lands for it. Uh the question is like, would you rather have a seventeenth land or a dark favor? Depends how fast this deck can get. I think I'd really rather the seventeenth land because I wanna hit the Soren's Vengeance to finish off my opponents too. So I'd rather finish them off with a Soren's Vengeance than a Dark Favor. I don't know, realistically speaking, I think a Dark Favor might just get one or two hits in like two hits would be Pretty good value, because that's six damage for two mana. <laughs> but that being said, you also have the chance of getting yourself two for one at the same time. So, and considering how small our creatures are, that's very likely. So, I guess we'll just keep it like this. Um, it's color sort, very heavy preference towards black. Let's see what Magic Online says. 10-7. I would tend to agree here. We only need double red for Chandra's Phoenix, which we don't really need on turn 3 right away, because we have a lot of other 3 drops as well, and 2 drops to supplement. And we have Reverberate, which comes later in the game, so yeah, I guess this is fine. Plus we need to hit our Soren's Vengeance on turn 7 if we can ever if we get to that point. So, plus Drifting Shade, you know, wants more swaps. So we'll submit this, and we'll join you back here for round 1.